Cliff advancing. Patrick Bonner and Mark trying to get it in there somehow. And it's plotted into the back of the net. And Tipperary have scored to Brian O'Mara. The Leinster final was a disappointment. Um, possibly, you know, the, the double match, we didn't get the match we were expecting. And the, the Leinster final, we just we didn't get going at all. We were very disappointed in our performance. The, the, the thing is to feed him as early as you can into Joe Cannon. And it is down for Joe Cannon! What a start! To be fair to Galway, they, they were outstanding that day, you know, and they, they hit the ground run and got the start they were looking for, and they never looked back. Here's Lark over for Tipperary. Let's it go. Goal chance, and it's buried in the back of the net by Noel McGrath. The comeback man involved in it, Noel McGrath, burying it past Anthony Nash. And to get a win below in Parky Keeve, I can never be underestimated. Like, it's only our second time winning there in I don't know how many decades, you know? So, I mean, we were delighted to get out of that and, 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 and beat Cork. This time there's pressure on, and this time it's Patrick Bonnermar, the supplier, John O'Brien, the finisher. I mean, we showed a real workman-like performance, I think, on the day. Again, Watford came at us, and we seemed to, to hold our ground. And even in the second half, when they came at us again, the forwards did their thing, took off the points and all. And, and coming out winning by six or seven points was, was a great result for us, considering Watford had, had thrown everything at us. You know, we were under no illusions, I suppose. The Limerick match is going to be a, you know, a, a very physical and tight encounter, you know. And particularly winning the camp, we certainly weren't, weren't looking beyond Limerick. Um, and in fairness, that's what we got. Towards Henry Shefflin, left the ball after him, played out quickly, real down to Hill. Shefflin should be a goal, it is. Is that the moment for Kenny finally arrive in this quarter final? I think even it was the first round, or a fine that doesn't matter. There's huge bite in these games, there's huge anticipation and, and nervous energy around it. And, and both teams knowing that they have to perform to the max uh, in order to get any chance of winning by a point, even, you know. You just look down to your team sheet and you'd have to, you know, they're, they're fabulous hurlers and you would respect them. But, you know, at the same time, neither of us want to lose and, you know, it's, it's, it's all to play for on Sunday. Yeah, Tipperary's Brendan Cummins and Kilkenny's Brian Hogan. Cyril Farrell. Looking there at Brendan Commons, legend obviously for Tipperary. In front of him, his fullback Paul Kern, stalwart of the team, captain of the team, and in front of him again, Conor O'Mahony. Yeah, to me, O'Mahony has been the rock really. Coming from Newport, he's very, very steady, very good in Championship program. Might be as good in the league match, but he's deadly in the Championship program. Good in the air and good to read it. Like here now against Limerick, like he's just he has this ability to get onto a ball, has a little look up and bang away, kind of good striker, very good for long range freeze as well. Here he comes again, you know, gets where to tackle here and jumps to that over the sideline. You know, but like there's times when you have to do that as well. Now Paulic Maher is always in the half back position. as you staples is, is the new lad this this year. Again he's going to little pop pass out here, a little flick, has a look up and bang it away again. He he's, he comes back to he's there the whole time. Again now this ball is going to break around here so when, once he gets near bluff down here, get onto it again. If he gets onto it anywhere near a sniff of the toddy that would go on. Cuts across, always around, picking up behind the wing backs, drives it forward. But to have a nice half back then, if, if Stapleton fits in with him along with Parik Maher and the two boys midfield, Marsh, Brendan Maher and Shane McGrath, that's the real kind of engine of this team. Again, a lovely little flick pass here, bang up the field. He, he's so pivotal, you know, TJ Reid is picked centre forward, but I think after about, even after five or seven minutes, you'll see that the whole Kilkenny tackle, it kind of tried to drag him out. Last year they dragged him out of the centre, tried to move him away, but a man, he will try to hold back in the middle, hold the pocket, and let the wing backs do all the running rather than he, because if he's dragged out of the middle, they'll have his, that's, yeah. that's where Kilkenny tried to go down that centre. Ger, over the years, obviously, like any other sport, hurling has changed, tactics have changed, styles have changed. I know it's a hobby horse of uh, Babs Keating that the slither is too light, driving it <laughs> too far down the field. You still need two good midfielders, and Kilkenny will be relying on their two men today. It's actually more important than ever, you know. And you don't have to be any great hurling expert to realise the importance of these two men, Mick Finley and, and Michael Rice to, to, to Kilkenny. Finley is an extra forward we need to come through for midfield. You see the goal there on last year's All Ireland decisive goal. He also acts as a, as a defender. Ferocious physical power. See that tackle there on Shane McGrath last year, which put Shane really out of the game. And you know, Rice the same way. Rice comes into the game. You know, look at watch this pass of Finley. He has brilliant vision as well. You know. He has everything you'd need in, a, in, in, in here at the forward here. Ball in the net, game over. Now, Michael Rice is a different type of player. He's a lighter type of player, very good at picking out, out, out points from, from far out the field. But really, we shouldn't speak about midfield anymore because that dreaded football phrase of the middle third is what we should be talking about because that's where all the action is now between, the 40, between both 45 metres lines. And if you haven't a man with physical presence there, you're going to be blown out of it. Look at Ian Latanian and Andy Smith did the last day to, Galway, uh, to Kilkenny yeah. in the Leinster final. He is absolutely, Finley is just vital. Mm. You know, if there was a... 
transfer market outside of Joe Kenny, he'd be the next most yeah. important player. But you know, that is where the real battle is going to be fought today in that middle third. It's going to be very, very crowded, and you're going to need men like Finlay and like Rice there, men with physique in that place. Today. Big, big hits. Big, big, big yeah. hits. Big well, hit. the can, intensity of the, the, the Galway Kenny match is still being talked about, but sure, look. Kenny and Tipper doing this since Adam was a small boy. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I I'd rather than picking out an individual. I mean, I'm I'm just looking at the, the whole the rivalry that's between Tipperary and uh, and Kilkenny. It's just immense, you know, and what it means to the players themselves, which is the most important thing. I mean, this is amateur game, amateur sportsmanship. Yeah, it's borderline. It's probably on the edge. You need a very good referee at times. Look, you see Harley flying space, space, <laughs> out of space there. And look, I mean, this is what Fun we expect, body. and this why this is why it, hey, it it captures everybody's imagination. I mean, I was speaking to two guys in the hotel prior to the match. You're from Mayo, 36 years coming. You know, you're saying from Mayo coming down. Maybe they should be coming in two weeks' time for the football. No, it's down to see the hurling. Loads of kids alongside us from Cushendall, yeah. all down to yeah. see the quality yeah. of this. I and mean, when we've seen the physicality stakes. We've seen the fitness levels that these guys actually achieved, to, but in, most importantly, Michael, it's the skill level as well. I mean, they've have, they have enthralled us with the skills, mm, mm. the goal scoring, and sometimes we talk about the marquee players all the time, and we forget about the other guys. The guys that are out there have a job to do as well. The hooking, the blocking, getting in there, do not let your opponent dominate, and we're going to see a whole lot of that today, hopefully. We sure are time now to hear from the managers and their thoughts ahead of this afternoon's intriguing showdown. They are, of course, Tipperary boss Dick and Ryan Kilkenny's Brian Cody. And they've been speaking to Claire McNamara. Uh, Declan, we're all set for another chapter in this uh, great rivalry and, of course, a chance for you to avenge last year's final defeat. Yeah, we, we've been waiting for this game for a while. You know, we know it's a massive, massive game for us, uh, for, for the players and for the management and everyone in Tipperary concerned with the game of Ireland. And we're look, really looking forward to it. Of course, Kilkenny have suffered a defeat this summer. Does that make them more vulnerable? Yeah, well, you know, I suppose it shows they can be beaten, but, uh, you know, it, it, it also it, it gives them that extra edge that, you know, that if they don't play the form on any given day, that a team like Tip or Galway can beat them. Brian, I suppose we're more accustomed to this meeting in September. How are Kilkenny? Yeah, obviously looking forward to it, Claire. You know, it's all there in semi final and huge day because the prize is. All there in the final for the winners and for the losers. It's the end of the year, so it's a massive game for both teams. You came a slightly different route this year. Does that matter at all? For today's game, it doesn't matter. No, no. I mean, we would have preferred the other route. Obviously, we'd like to have won the Leinster Championship, but it meant an extra game, one extra game, a quarter final, and maybe to be played in the Leinster final, maybe we needed that game. OK, then, who are the men to look out for in today's hurling semi-final with the starting lineups for Tipperary and Kilkenny? It's over to our match commentators, Marty Morrissey and Michael Dignan. Thank you very much, Michael. This is such a hard one to call, and the statistics are mind-boggling. If Kilkenny win, it's a record-breaking seventh All-Ireland final in a row. If Tipperary win, it's their fourth consecutive final. Yet in championship hurling, these counties have never, ever drawn a game. I wonder, could it happen today? Like a good wine, Brendan Cummins seems to get better with age. Now 37, the Tipperary goalkeeper plays in his 71st championship match this afternoon. Fullback Paul Curran captains the team, flanked by cornerbacks Conor O'Brien and Michael Cahill, who interestingly have both scored a point each in the championship. Thomas Stapleton and Porrick Maher are top class wing backs, and with Conor O'Mahony at number six, Tipperary have an impressive half back line. Undoubtedly, centre field is crucial. So how will Brendan Maher and Shane McGrath cope with the physicality, intensity and skill of Fenley and Rice? Patrick Bonner Maher leads the Tipperary attack. Out on the wings are the Perlis Sarsfields lads. Pa Burke and Lar Corbett, Herner of the Year 2010, will wear 10 and 12 respectively. John O'Brien, who scored 1-3 in the Munster final, is named at full forward with two 20-somethings, Brian O'Mara and Noel McGrath in the corners. Michael Dykeman. Well, Marty, I think uh, Thomas Stapleton, to me today, is a key man for Tipperary. Um, in last year's All-Ireland Final, John O'Keefe started at number five and Kilkenny earmarked him uh, as a possible weak link. They played every ball up to Henry Shefflin, who was on him. And in the championship so far this year, Tom Stapleton has done great hurling. But at this level, in Crow Park, he's never been here before hurling for Tipperary. And I think um, Kilkenny will be looking at him. He'll have to do his job defensively as well as he's a lovely hurler on the ball, but he'll have to be on his toes defensively today. In contrast to their last visit to Crow Park for the Leinster final, the All-Ireland champions look more familiar, stronger, better balanced and ready for battle. Take it from me, the fact that Galway are waiting in the final is an added incentive to this team. Wearing the goalkeeper's jersey is Dunham Maggins' David Herity. 
now firmly established as Brian Cody's number one. He's one of the best keepers in the country. Kilkenny seemed to malfunction a little bit when he's not around, so the presence of JJ Delaney at fullback is vital. Standing right beside him, as always, will be Paul Murphy and Jackie Tyrrell. Centre back Brian Hogan returns after injury. Tommy Walsh is back to form, while Kieran Joyce gets the nod ahead of Richie Doyle for the number seven jersey. It's the strongest midfield partnership in the country. Michael Fennelly and Michael Rice will be expected to bring their A game to Croker, and if they do, watch out, Tim. And what about this for a half forward line? Henry Shefflin has scored 3.24 in three games, but TJ Reid and Captain Owen Larkin retain match winner status on any given day. And the inner line for Kilkenny has that goal scoring potential written all over them. There's no Richie Hogan, but there is Colin Fennelly, Richie Power, and Aidan Fogarty. Well, over the years, Marty, to me, JJ Delaney has been one of the one of the great players for um, Kilkenny. You know, at number seven, to me, he's unpar he's un <coughs> he's unrivaled as the greatest number seven I've ever seen. And um, he's picked a three. I, you know, I think Kilkenny could really do with him at seven today to cut off to supply a ball. But whether he's at three or seven, he's a vital man. He's missed a couple of matches through injury, as you said earlier, over the last couple of years. And when he's not there, the re the calmness that you associate with Kilkenny with their backline is not there. And when he is there, I think he lifts the Tommy Walshes, the Brian Hogan's. The Jackie Turles because he brings such surety every time he goes in the ball he wins it he's brilliant in the air and you know uh, Tipperary will have to find some way of breaking him down if we're going to win this game today the scene is set Carl McAllister from Cork is the match referee we're moments from the throw in and Tipperary have won the toss and have decided to play with wind advantage back to you Michael yeah, Marty, and we're seeing uh, Michael Fennelly just uh, jogging yeah. over to join the parade there because, uh, Ger, he was being treated uh, up the other end of the pitch, up yeah, the Hill 16 for a while he's there. He's worrying now for, for Kilkenny's... What looks like a hamstring Yeah, you know, yeah, very worrying from Kilkenny's point of view that it have, you know, if, if this was going to be done, it would have been done in the dressing room. Dressing room the fact right. that it would be done on the field shows that at, uh, during the he warm-up, he must, have, he must yeah. have felt some kind of a twinge. And we just have to say how important mm, he is yes, to uh, Kilkenny. Yeah. But he's back on his feet again. He's in the parade. Now, we have seen a lot of this in the Olympics, you know, this black band that's and people good, yeah. with, with, with hamstring problems. But hopefully this, that's the end of it. Maybe it's just a twinge and when he warms up, he'll be OK. All right, lads, 30 seconds between the three of you. Who's going to win, uh, Cyril? I think Kilkenny is still doing it. Tipperary have a full, complete new up around the right wing. You know, you look at Conor O'Brien, Tommy Stapleton, even Pab Buck, if you could transfer his club horn to his championship horn, and Brian O'Mara, they're all relatively new and for this championship. I just have the feeling Kilkenny will edge it out. OK. I'll keep it short. I think Owen Larkin and Richie Power will come back to that form of the, that they had in the league. They're a vital step up today, but especially with, with the like of Eddie Brian Gunn and, and Richie Ho uh, Hogan oh, missing. Yeah. I think this is going to be the it's going to be the game of the four game series. But at the end of the day, the doors are locked in Kilkenny. I think they're really ready. They're as mentally ready and as physically ready as they possibly could be. We'll see the best of them today and I expect that'll be enough to get him through. Yeah, I go against the two lads. I must say I think Tipperary have been a bit, bit of a momentum. Um, if Tipperary to win today, certainly they've got to go back to 2010 performances. They've got to take the game to Kilkenny in the first 10 minutes. We don't have the 10 minutes but Tipper in this game or not. Yeah, Tip yeah. for me. OK, lads, thanks for that. It's back to the commentary box then to rejoin Michael Dygan and first, of course, Marty Morrison. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, indeed, uh, the uh, potential injury there to uh, Michael Fennelly is crucial, isn't it, Michael? Absolutely. Uh, worrying to see that in the warm-up. Uh, strapped up, but, you know, maybe not too serious. Uh, he's had his share of injury problems. And, I, I you know, I, I just something the lads didn't really talk about there was... You know, Kilkenny bench, Richie Hogan is out today, Eddie Brennan has gone from last year's Alarm. Two forwards that had such a huge bearing on the final last year, not playing today. And if you look down through their subs, you know, normally they look they'd have maybe TJ Reid or someone like that on their subs bench who can come on and change a game. But looking at Killian Buckley, a very good player, match or route, but they haven't got the experience of some of those other players. So I don't think Kilkenny can afford. I think they'll need this 15 to start and to win the game for them, more or less, if they're going to win it. Whereas Tipperary have, you know, they have Seamus Callan, they have Shane Burke, they have Owen Kelly on the bench. And if they're still in with 15 minutes to go, that'll tell. But I'd agree with what Tomas said there. I think uh, you'll know by Tipperary's attitude. They'll have to, they'll have to, they'll have to match the physicality of Kilkenny early on if you're going to have any chance. Well, Tipperary's record in All-Ireland semi-finals is pretty, pretty impressive. They played in 31, winning 25 and losing six. And here in Croke Park, we have a moment's silence.